In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a color map that uses the colors of the Ukraine flag. So the Ukraine flag has uh, this color yellow and this color blue, and we are going to make a custom color map first in Python, and then I'll switch to MATLAB to show you how to do this in MATLAB, where the colors in the custom color map are the um, colors of the Ukraine flag. And actually, I inserted white in the middle just so it, uh, yeah, so the transition looks a little bit nicer. And more generally, I'm going to show you how to create custom color maps using any colors. And uh, well, the Ukraine flag is just two randomly selected colors that I happen to pick. And uh, what you see here is an example of what it would look like. So this is just a 40 by 40 matrix of random numbers just to illustrate what the color map looks like. Okay, so let's start. We need some libraries to create our color map. We will need NumPy, which we abbreviate as NP because I don't know, everyone else does, so we should do it too. And then we need uh, SciPy, but we actually don't need all of SciPy. We just need from SciPy import interpolate. So we're gonna do a little bit of interpolation using SciPy. And then of course we're making images. So we need matplotlib, so import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then finally, we need one specific function from matplotlib.colors import listed color map. This is a special function, uh, and we don't need this entire library. We only need this one function. Okay, so how do we begin? We begin by identifying the colors that we want. So what are the colors? What are the RGB codes for the colors of the Ukraine flag? Well, I googled uh, Ukraine flag colors, and well, there's, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of results. I just happened to pick this website, and here we see the RGB codes for the blue and for the yellow. Now, I actually went to a couple of different websites, and I got slightly different color codes. So these are just the color codes from this particular website. Other websites gave slightly different numerical values for the RGB codes. But anyway, these are the codes that we need. So I'm gonna create some new variables here. These are going to be lists. So I'm gonna have one list for blue, one list for uh, yellow, and uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm gonna insert white in here. The white is not formally part of the Ukraine flag, but I am going to, yeah, it's nice to have this transition in here. Okay, so we're gonna have a list for each of these three colors, and those lists are going to contain the RGB codes. So the RGB code for the blue was 0, 87, and 184. So this is red, green, and blue channel saturation. And well, white is just, you know, it's all of everything. So it's 255 all the way around. And then the yellow is 254, it was 221, and 0. Okay, so now we have our RGB codes. And now what we need to do is map these onto a k by three matrix where k is the numerical resolution. So that the resolution, you know, how many of these discrete bars, discrete colors go between the lowest saturation and the highest saturation. I'm gonna call that parameter k. And for now, I'll just set that to 30. Once you have this code and you have everything working, then I certainly encourage you to play around with this and explore what happens when you use different values of K. All right, so what we need is, you can see there's this smooth transition from yellow into white into blue. So how do we get from these three sets of RGB colors into this smooth transition? For that, we need to interpolate. So we are going to interpolate from this red value to this red value to this red value, and then we interpolate from uh, this green value to this green value to this green value, and from this blue value through, through here. So I'm going to set up an interpolation grid. This is going to be the grid of x-axis values. Those will be linearly spaced between zero and one, and uh, there's gonna be k of them. So I can already actually dump this out. Let's run this code here. And you can see this is the grid that we are going to evaluate the interpolation function on. So now we need to create an interpolation function. So I'm gonna use interpolate.interp1d because this is uh, just one dimensional interpolation. And so what do we write here? Well, the first input is going to be 
the values where we have real data, and then we're going to interpolate across those values. So what are the values between 0 and 1 where we actually have valid data? Well, the data are, you know, this number, this number, and this number, and we want them to go from 0 to 0.5, so this is 0.5 meaning exactly halfway through, up to 1. So here I'm going to write 0, 0.5, 1. These are the values where we have uh, data. And then what are the actual data points? Well, data values are the red color saturation for blue and then white and then yellow. So I'm going to add, create another list here. That's going to be the first element of blue and then the uh, first element of white and then the first element of yellow. So it looks like this. So run that code, you know, it's good practice to periodically keep rerunning code over and over again to make sure you're not making any careless mistakes as you go along. For example, you know, if you would make a little mistake like that. Okay, so let's have a look at this um, fr variable. So this is an interpolation object. It's basically like a function that we can query. So we are going to query this function at values of xi. So now you can see that this is going from 0, which is the first value, up to 255, which is actually because of the interpolation, I guess it never actually gets all the way up to 255. Oh yeah, so that's here. So that's the top value. And then it goes down to 254. Okay, so that's for red. And then, of course, we do the same thing for uh, the green channel and the blue channel. So I'm going to copy paste this. So this is the red interpolation object, the green interpolation object, and the blue interpolation object. And now here, this needs to be indexing 1 and indexing 2. I hope this makes sense. The idea, again, a little bit of repetition here, but the idea is that we are going to interpolate across these discrete values. We're going to interpolate k times to go between 0 and 1. These are just you know arbitrary uh, numbers here with 0.5 in the middle. So this is going to give us a matrix. I'm going to call this u flag equals, and we have to stack these up together. So it's going to be numpy.stack. And uh, what do we want to stack? Well, it's fr of xi, so the red channel interpolated. And then we have f g of xi, and then we have the, uh, I use f because I think of this as like a function that we've created. Okay, so those are what we need to concatenate, and we need to concatenate or stack along uh, the x-axis like this. So let's see what u flag looks like. Okay, so what we have here is a matrix. This is a 30 by 3 matrix where each column tells us the indices into red, and green and blue. And then the rows correspond to the discretizations. And that's basically where we get this color bar from. So I think you can see on the screen, uh, or at least you can see it on your own screen, you can see this is not perfectly smooth, right? There's these separate blocks and each block has its own color. So each one of these blocks corresponds to a color from each row. This is the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. All right, so we are, we're getting really close. We're not quite there yet. Now, what we need to do with this matrix is convert this into a color map. And this is what we use the function listed color map for. So I will write listed color map and then U flag. Now, it's almost this simple. Let's see what CMAP looks like. Uh, wait, sorry, I wanted to go back to U flag. So it's, um, oops, U flag, it's almost this simple, except uh, we need this to be a list. So I'm going to write to list to convert this NumPy array into a list. And this is actually a list of lists. So uh, each element in the list is the RGB code. Okay, so let's see, we need this to look like that. All right, so now we have our color map. Uh, it should be a dot in there. And, uh, well, actually, now it, it's really simple from here. We're just going to uh, immediately apply this color map. So let's just, uh, like what I showed before, I'm going to create some random numbers. So a 40 by 40, actually, you know, let's do 42, just because, you know, why not? 42 by 42 matrix and add the color bar and plt.show. Now, I haven't actually used this color map. So we are looking at 
the default Python's default color map, which is Parla, what we need to do here is simply add cmap equals the variable that I've created called cmap. Aha, and we get an error, uh, which is great. So it means that I forgot something. RGB, the A is for alpha or transparency. RGB values should be within a zero to one range. So there is actually one thing that I forgot. And that is, I have listed these color values in uh, from 0 to 255, so in integers. But Python needs them to be in a scaled range from 0 to 1. So uh, that's really easy to normalize. We just need to divide everything by 255. All right, and there we go. Here's our color map with the colors from the Ukraine flag. So we can do vmin equals minus two, you know, I'm just going to, um, I would like to have a, a little bit more color saturation so that the map is a little bit darker here. And uh, also making sure that it's symmetric. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. If you would like to continue exploring, then uh, something you can do is see if you can figure out how to get this map to go uh, to contain only the two colors in the Ukraine flag, which is blue and yellow. So that means basically skipping white. So you're going to need to modify something in this code. I'm not going to tell you exactly what, but make a few minor modifications here and, uh, and you'll see how it looks. Maybe you prefer that or maybe you will agree with my choice to add white in between the blue and the yellow. So here we are in MATLAB. Here is the example of what a Ukraine flag color map will look like on just some random data. It's just a 30 by 30 matrix of random numbers just to illustrate the color map. Okay, so the first thing we need is to get the RGB code of the yellow and blue in the Ukraine flag. I found that just by Googling Ukraine flag colors, there's actually lots and lots of hits, lots and lots of websites that will show you the color codes. And uh, well, I just happened to pick this one website. Now, uh, I found that different websites gave slightly different color values. So you might use a slightly or you might find slightly different numerical values for the RGB codes. Um, but uh, well, that doesn't really matter. It's, it's something like this blue and something like this yellow. I'm going to go with these numbers that I found here. So let's start by creating some variables. These are going to be three element vectors. So we have blue and that was 0 and 87 and 184. So again, these are the RGB codes. So this is R, G, and B corresponding to red saturation, green saturation, and blue saturation. So now, as you can see here, I chose to put white in between the yellow and the blue. Uh, later on, I will give you the opportunity to see what it looks like without the white. It goes from blue directly into yellow. I, I find that to be, it was just a little harder to interpret. So I, I like it with white in the middle. So white is, of course, just uh, fully saturated on all the color channels. So 255 for everything. And then yellow was 254 and 221 and 0. Okay, so these are the colors. And the next thing that we need to do is actually map these colors, or in particular these RGB channel codes, into an interpolated color map. So we want a matrix. We want an, an, a K by 3 matrix where the columns are the interpolated color codes that go smoothly from blue to white to yellow. And the rows are each of the discretizations along here. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to set xi. Actually, first I'm going to create a variable called k. And I'll set k to be 30. This is going to be the interpolation resolution. I will um, give you the opportunity in a few moments to play around with this parameter and see what effect it has. So I'm going to create a grid. This is going to be the grid that we evaluate our color interpolation on. It's going to go from 0 to 1. This is all just normalized numbers in k steps. Okay, so what do we need now? We need a vector that goes from blue up to, so the, the, the red color channel saturation for uh, blue through white and up to yellow. So to do this, I'm going to use interpolation function, in particular interp1. So I'm going to write 0 0.51 and then I will actually before that let me let me explain this. So what we are going to do 
is interpolate 30 increments between 0 and 1, and we are going to stop at 0 and 0.5 and 1. These are like where we have measured data. That corresponds to the red saturation on the blue channel, the red saturation on the white channel, which is halfway in between, and then the red saturation in the yellow channel. Okay, and what are the actual data values that we have at uh, down here, here in the middle, and up at the top? Well, those are the red colored channels for, e for each of the flag colors. So that's blue 1, and then it's white 1, and then it's y 1 like this and then xi this is what we are interpolating over so press Control enter on the keyboard to run this code and let's have a look at this so here we have r this is our uh, vector r actually let me just show it as a column vector so you can see it starts at zero and then it's going to go up it doesn't actually get all the way up to exactly 255 just because of the interpolation and then it goes down to 254 Okay, now it turns out we actually need this to be in column format. So I'm going to transpose this anyway. Okay, so that is the red channel. Now I'm going to uh, copy and paste this twice. And that's because we need a vector for green and a vector for blue. Now, what do we do here? How do we change these values? So these values are almost exactly the same, except here we needed the red channels. And now we need the green channels, which is the second element in these um, vectors of the color code. So this is going to be 2, 2, and 2. And what's going here? You guessed it. It's 3, 3, and 3. So we're just indexing the third element. Okay, so uh, the next thing we need to do is basically just create a matrix out of this. So I'm going to call this cmap equals RGB. Very simple. We have these as column vectors, so we are just concatenating them into a matrix. So we can see what this matrix C map looks like. So what you see here is uh, each uh, column corresponds to the RGB channel. So red, green, and blue saturation, and each row corresponds to the discretization of this color bar over here. All right, so then uh, actually we're, we're really done. So we, now, we just need to demonstrate it now. So I'm going to make an image of random numbers and uh, let's do 33. So here we see, actually, let me uh, close this figure and run this again, just so you can see uh, without actually specifying this color map. So I have MATLAB to be to use a jet color map as the default for me, but the modern uh, MATLAB default is actually Parla. Parula, which looks like this. So this is not the color map that we have just created. So what we need to do is simply write color map and then the matrix that we have created here. And uh, and we get an error. Let's see, what is the error? Aha, uh -huh. error using color map. Color map must have values in the range of zero to one. Now I have specified these RGB codes in integer values, so between 0 and 255. But we need these to be specified between 0 and 1. So it's no problem. We just normalize by dividing by 255. And there we go. That's the result. And yeah, we can uh, add a, a color bar here, which makes it look nicer. And let's see, I'm also going to set the color map to go from uh, Two to or minus two to plus two, just to you know, get a little bit more saturation. Okay, very cool. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like, if you want to continue exploring this code, one thing I encourage you to do, well, two things. One is to see the effect of changing the resolution, K, on the result, but also try to remove white. So see what happens if you get this color map just to go from blue directly into yellow without any white in between. That's an interesting thing to try. You can also try exploring different values here. So setting white to be at, you know, 70% of the way up instead of 50% of the way up. Lots and lots of things you can explore.